Hey everyone, today I'm bringing you a budget-friendly melee gearing guide. You all seem to like the budget range guide I put out a little while ago, so here's a melee one, and I'll do a magic one soon too. Melee is a super underappreciated style, and it's even hated by a lot of the community, but it really does have some very decent price to performance, especially around the mid to high level. Today I'm going to cover mostly from level 70 to level 90 gear. Specifically I'll be covering a weapon upgrade order, an armor upgrade order, other equipment that you'd want to consider, unlockable abilities, an overall upgrade order, and a few example setups. Without any further delay, let's get into it. I've been working on a website to accompany my guide videos because I feel like a lot of you will take in information easier that way. There's a link down below to the page for this video listing out my recommended upgrade order for Melee with live updating prices and wiki links for everything. As new items get released, I'll try to keep this link up to date even when this video is not. First, I'll go over the weapons from level 70 to level 92 that you'd want to consider if you're on a budget, starting with an Acronium Two-Handed Great Axe plus 4. The Necronium Great Axe is a level 70 attack weapon and the plus 4 variant has the stats of a level 74 weapon. This is really great that extra 4 tiers of damage and accuracy is especially huge at this point. Also, being a two-handed weapon, this will be really good for multi-combat training and slayer. This weapon can be obtained by either smithing it at level 70 or it can be bought from the GE for about 740k. At level 75 attack, upgrade to the Saradoman Sword. This is a super cheap tier 75 weapon that's only going to run you about 880k. A big benefit of the Saradaman Sword is that it's augmentable and cheap, so it's a great way to get some good, quick invention XP through disassembling. There are two incremental upgrades available at level 78 attack, though you can skip both and wait until level 80 if you want to. The best option is the Sun Spear, which requires the Lord of Vampirium quest to obtain. This spear can be converted between magic, ranged, and melee and is especially useful as an early game planted feet switch because of this, so it's nice to pick one up if you can. The other option is the Vesta Spear, which currently costs 1.8 mil and degrades to dust after 100,000 charges. This is a pretty expensive upgrade at this point, so it's not necessary, but it's nice if you can afford it for the extra damage and accuracy, and the spear is also really good if you're doing Corporal Beast. Now for the next set of upgrades, the tier 80 gear. There's one good option at this tier, the Bane Two-Handed Sword plus 4, which costs about 730k GP and has tier 79 stats. This is the cheap, but still good option. The other cheap tier 80 options are the Chaotic Weapons. The Chaotic Maul costs 200,000 Dungeoneering Tokens and Dual Wields will run you about 300k for a set. Chaotics aren't super worth it anymore, especially since they're only one tier better than the Bane plus 4, so I don't recommend you pick up any of these. At tier 82, you unlock two incredible weapons. Number one is the Lanikea Spear, which does tier 90 damage at the cost of having tier 75 accuracy. It has two tile halberd range and costs about 15 mil. This is the most expensive weapon so far, but it's even better than the Noxious Scythe at places you have perfect accuracy, because the spear has a passive effect for a 5% increased chance to apply poison and a 5% increase to poison damage, which can be pretty huge at vulnerable mobs. If you're doing Slayer or bosses with low accuracy, pick this up if you can if it fits in your budget. The other great tier 82 weapon is the Masuda's War Spear, which has both tier 82 damage and accuracy as well as halberd range and costs about 2.7 million GP. If you either can't make use of the Lanakia Spear or can't afford it, the Masuda's War Spear is what you want. With tier 82 accuracy, you won't be splashing just about anywhere. And the Halberd ranged is great for Slayer, ED3 farming, Araxor, and a lot of other places. Our list pretty much ends at tier 85. With the Arch Glacier's release last year, we got the absolutely broken Dark Eyes Sword, which are tier 85 but do tier 88 damage. Additionally, the main hand has a passive effect, allowing you to use Hurricane while dual wielding, and the set effect of decoupling the cooldown of Hurricane and Destroy, allowing you to use both in a rotation. Because of the ability to use both Destroy and Hurricane in your Zerk rotation and the tier 88 damage, these will generally be better than even tier 90 Drygores, so you'll be able to keep these until you're ready to upgrade to tier 92s. The only drawback is the price tag. Together, these will run you about 43 million GP right now. Not so bad for what you get, but still almost three times the price tag of the previous most expensive weapon in the list. If you can't swing that, there's still two more tier 85 sets worth getting. Number one are the Ripper Claws. 
which only cost about 1.6 million GP for both. These have tier 85 damage and accuracy and have the set effect that increases your damage against your target up to 5% as their health depletes below 50%. The other options are the Blade of Nymora and Blade of Avarice, which have tier 90 accuracy and tier 80 damage, and cost about 3.6 million GP together. If you need high accuracy, go for the Fury Swords. If you have high accuracy, go with the Ripper Claws. An honorable mention here is the Mizuari, a tier 85 spear that costs 3.1 million GP and is really great if you want to kill Corp. That's pretty much all of the actual budget-oriented list, though I do have one note for future upgrades. Your next weapon after the Dark Ice Swords should be the Abyssal Scourge, a tier 92 whip that currently costs 241 mil. That's a ton of cash, but it's well worth it. The Scourge has a massive bleed inflicting passive that actually makes it better than the tier 95 Dark Shard of Ling. Now let's get into armor. At level 70 defense you'll have access to Bandos, tier 70 power armor that will cost about 5.8 mil right now for the full set. This armor is augmentable which can be a huge boost to defense and damage with the right perks. Bandos is non-degradable and cheap and can easily carry you all the way to late game for most things other than high level bosses where you will take a lot of damage. If the 5.5 million GP price tag is a little too much for you and or you don't have the invention level to augment and perk the gear properly, you can make a set of Superior Rock Shell. Superior Rock Shell requires level 65 defense and completion of the Fremenic Trials quest. You can create this armor by using Fremenic equipment patches on pieces of Rock Shell armor. In total, this will cost about 153k for the full set, which is only very slightly worse than Bandos for about 2.7% of the cost, though this set does degrade the dust over 100,000 charges or about 25 hours or so. An unfortunate side of melee is that most of its good armors are very expensive compared to what you're getting, and generally armor will cost quite a bit more than weapons at any tier. Level 80 unlocks the Torva and Zero sets, which are about 402 mil and 114 mil respectively. For mid-tier armor, they just aren't worth the price. Instead of those tier 80 sets, you'll have two options. One is to keep the Bandos armor until level 88, making sure to perk it with good strong perks. Option 2 is to grab a set of Stadius's armor, which consists of the head, chest, and legs and only costs about 1.6 million GP. This is tier 78 to grade to dust armor, but has 100,000 charges, meaning that it's going to last from 25 to 30 hours. The only downside of using this armor is that it isn't augmentable. Since it only consists of the head, chest, and legs, you can use Bandos or Superior Rock Shell gloves and boots. Level 80 Defense also gives you access to the Laceration Boots, Tier 80 Melee Power Boots with the passive effect that lets you use Bladed Dive with just a main hand or two-handed weapon instead of only dual wield. This is much more handy than it sounds, and these will only run you about 673k right now. At 85 Defense, you'll be able to use Cinderbane Gloves, which are all type gloves with all style damage bonuses. These have the passive effect of inflicting a huge amount of poison damage on your target and are best in slot anywhere your target is poisonable. These are pretty steeply priced at 70 mil, but will be well worth it once you have the cash. Most importantly, level 85 unlocks the Jaws of the Abyss. Melee used to be an incredibly adrenaline-starved style. The Jaws fixed this. This is a level 85 power helmet with the passive effect that when using basic abilities gives 2% more adrenaline for each bleed inflicted on the target. That's 6% more adrenaline per basic with this member, slaughter, and blood tendrils active for 8% when using abyssal parasites. The Jaws of the Abyss are best in slot, pick this over any other helmet right now. Currently, this costs 12 million GP. At level 88, you'll want another set of Stadius's armor. This time you'll be using an Ancient Warrior's equipment patch to upgrade each piece, which turns them into tier 88 armor and makes them augmentable, which you need to do. The total price of this is about 11 million GP for the chest and legs, upgrade patches, and augmenters. Much less than the 41 million GP for the masterwork body and legs. Couple this with laceration boots and either bandos gloves or cinder banes, and you'll be able to do most content pretty easily. Level 90 unlocks the Razorback Gauntlets, which are decent melee power gloves that only cost about 620k. These are nice to have until you can afford cinder banes. Eventually you want either trim masterwork or vestments of havoc, but this loadout will be plenty good until then. Now that we're through weapons and armor, let's take a look at some of the other equipment that you'll want. Let's start with the next slot. 
A really good early game necklace is the Ceridolman's Whisper, which gives a 36 strength bonus and only requires 70 strength to wear. The Whisper is about 800k less than a Fury and gives a 3.3 higher strength bonus. This amulet is currently going for 170k so its price to performance is really good. In addition to the strength bonus it also gives a small prayer bonus. For 100,000 Dungeoneering tokens, you can upgrade the Whisper to the Brawler's Knockout Necklace at level 80 strength for a plus 44 strength bonus. Depending on where you're using it, you can also attach a Blood Necklace Shard to the Knockout Necklace to make a Brawler's Blood Necklace, which does some nice passive damage and heals you as well. Eventually you want an Amulet of Souls, then Essence of Finality. But the Ceridolman's Whisper and Brawler Necklaces are a great starting point. Next up is Rings. A cheap option here is the Warrior Ring, which gives a 17.3 strength bonus and costs 423k. For either 8 Soul War Zeal or 180 Thaler, you can imbue it for a 25.2 strength bonus. This is going to be your best early game ring if you're on a budget, especially if you can imbue it. Eventually, you want to either upgrade to the Reaver's Ring or Champion's Ring. If you need a ring that will work with all styles, go for the Reaver's Ring. The Reaver's Ring gives a 27.7 bonus to all styles and a 5% increased critical strike chance at the cost of 5% accuracy. The price is pretty high, but well worth it. This ring requires 10 Berserker Rings and a Heart of the Berserker to make, which costs about 64 mil right now. Again, the benefit of the Reaver's Ring is that it's usable for all styles. The best ring for melee is the Champion's Ring, which gives a 30.4 strength bonus and gives 3% increased critical strike chance against the bleeding targets. Based on that alone, this ring is usually worse than the Reaver's, but it has excellent upgrade potential. You can craft this ring using the Heart of the Warrior and 10 Warrior Rings, which will cost about 35 mil. Using an enchantment of heroism, which costs about 55 mil, will make the champion's ring best in slot for melee. This enchantment gives 4% critical strike chance against bleeding targets, and 1.5% increased critical strike damage for each bleed effect on your target, which can be a huge DPS increase if used effectively. For your pocket slot, get the Scripture of Jazz, which runs about 13 mil and is nearly as good, if not better, than the 400 million GP Scripture of Fool. Check out my ranged gearing guide for a better explanation on that. The Jazz book is up to around a 9% DPS increase and is super cheap, only costing about 60k per hour. You can also use the Scrimshaw of Vampirism, which is super helpful when learning bosses, healing you for about 5% of damage dealt. These cost 2 mil each and last for 3 hours. I never would have learned hit a boss without these and I highly recommend using them as a learner. For your cape, use a kiln cape for free until you can get a zuck cape. The kiln capes are super easy to get these days and cost nothing. Otherwise, either use a skill cape or a max cape. If you have 99 strength, make sure to take advantage of its passive by either wearing it, pit it on the Anachromia skill cape stand, or sacrificing it to your max or expert cape. Since you're using melee, you won't have a need for your ammo slot, so either bring a rune pouch for vengeance, disruption shield, or another useful spell, smith armor spikes, or bring a quiver for the prayer bonus. That's it for other miscellaneous equipment. Of course, there are upgrades that you can make from here, but these will be a great starting point. Now, onto unlockable abilities. Melee has some excellent ones. I'll go in order of when you should unlock them. Number one on the list is Blood Tendrils, which you can get by completing the Dig Site quest. This ability requires level 75 attack and is a bleed that does up to 90% ability damage every 1.2 seconds for 6 seconds and hits you for 27% of the total damage. Because of the Jaws of Abyss, Champion's Ring, and eventually the Masterwork Spear of Annihilation, bleeds are incredibly important for melee. Next up is Bladed Dive, which requires 65 attack and can be bought for 63 million anima from Shattered Worlds. This is a movement ability that lets you instantly dive to a tile up to 10 tiles away and deal 125% ability damage to enemies in all adjacent tiles. This ability is great just for the precise movement and the AoE damage can be really nice too. Normally this ability requires dual wield weapons to use, but laceration boots allow bladed dive to be used with either just a main hand or a two handed weapon. Using a halberd ranged weapon allows you to do some crazy AoE damage with this ability, especially since its cooldown resets if you kill a target within 6 seconds of hitting it. Next is an expensive but absolutely massive upgrade. Normally I wouldn't even put something like this in the list, but it really is game changing. Greater Barge is next, costing 176 million GP right now and is worth every cent. This ability upgrades the Barge ability to increase its damage done 
Every tick you're not attacking, by 10%, up to 225% ability damage, which is really nice. What makes this ability necessary is that after 4.8 seconds of not attacking your target, you'll get a buff effect that causes your next channel attack to become a damage over time, allowing you to continue using abilities. This means that you can apply Assault, a up to 876% ability damage ability in one hit. Good abilities to use with this are Assault, Destroy, and Flurry to a lesser extent. While under Berserk, this will allow you to deal an incredible amount of burst damage. The next ability on the list is Greater Flurry, which costs about 78 million GP right now. This increases the damage of Flurry by 67% when used in single target, and each hit also decreases the cooldown of Berserk by 1.2 seconds, up to 4.8 seconds per ability. One of the best parts of this ability is its first two hits, which deal 314% ability damage in one global cooldown. Normally, it's best to cancel Greater Flurry immediately after getting the first two hits in, unless you need the full Berserk cooldown effect. Last on the list of unlockable abilities is Greater Fury, which costs 229 million GP. I'm not going to talk about this one, just don't get it. It's objectively worse than normal Fury in almost all cases if you're using Fury correctly. Now that I've gone over the unlock order for weapons, armor, other equipment, and abilities, I'll go over my recommended overall upgrade order. Keep in mind that this isn't a definitive list, upgrade in the order that best fits the content you're doing, or however you want. Starting out, pick the best weapon that you can use from the list. Next is Superior Rock Shell Armor, which costs about 153k. Next, pick up a Ceridomon's Whisper for 167k. The price to performance on this is way better than just about anything else from this point. Next, prioritize Stadius' Armor over Bandos. If you can afford it, the three pieces of the Stadius set are tier 78 and only cost 1.6 mil, significantly less than Bandos. If you can't use Stadius's, get Bandos if you have Envision Unlocked or stick with Rock Shell otherwise. If using Stadius' armor, feel free to keep using the Superior Rock Shell boots and gloves for now. At level 80 to attack, you'll get access to both the Lanikea Spear and Masuda's War Spear. If the accuracy of the Lanikea Spear won't negatively affect the content you're doing, use that, otherwise, get the Masuda's War Spear. When you hit level 85 attack, either get the Ripper Claws or the Twin Fury Swords instead. A Warrior Ring is also a really good upgrade at this point, especially if you can imbue it. Next up are Laceration Boots, which cost 640k and are well worth the price if you have Bladed Dive unlocked. First of the more expensive items is the Scripture of Jazz, a truly massive DPS increase for only 14 mil. Then the Jaws of Abyss at 12 mil. After that, upgrade to the Superior Stadius' armor, and make sure to augment it, which will only cost about 11 mil or so. The next thing that you want are the Dark Ice Swords for about 45 million GP, which are very decent upgrades over both tier 85 dual wield sets, but they're a little pricey. Now, if you have 90 defense, get Razorback Gauntlets. These degrade, but only cost 600k each. If you can make use of them, Cinderbanes are next, costing about 70 mil, but still very worth it. These can add thousands of damage per minute if the content you're doing is poisonable. And after that are the really expensive upgrades. Next, you'd want to look into Greater Barge. Then your choice of either the Reavers or Champion's Ring. If you pick the Champion's Ring, get the Enchantment of Heroism for 55 mil later on. After that, it's time for your first tier 92, the Abyssal Scourge. That's pretty much everything. After all this, look into getting an Amulet of Souls or Essence of Finality and more tier 92 gear. I know the last few things here are stretching the meaning of budget a little bit, but I just wanted to give you a look at what you'd be getting after the tier 85 sets. Also, you'll probably notice that I didn't include a few things, like the kiln, zuck, or skull capes here. That's just because they don't exactly fit into an upgrade order. They don't really have GP cost, just get them as soon as possible. Everything listed all at once can be a little bit overwhelming, so I'll show you a few example setups at different price points to help get you started. Here's a super cheap starter loadout that's decent for Slayer and beginner level bossing. For about a million GP, this is a set of power armor, a great early to mid game amulet with good upgrade potential, and a tier 74 two handed weapon that only requires level 70 attack. If you have 80 attack, you can swap the Necronium two hander for a Bane two handed sword plus 4 for an even cheaper tier 79 weapon. With the Bane Sword, you could easily do God Wars Dungeon 1 and even do some more mid to high level stuff like Twin Furies and Vindicta. 
Stepping up a little bit, here's a decent setup that would be good enough for most mid-level bosses and even some high-level bosses. For less than 4 mil, this is a great setup. The tier 85 Ripper Claws are slept on, they're super cheap and the tier 85 and tier 85 is good enough for most content in the game. This setup will be decent for God Wars Dungeon 2 bosses, 5 Mechanic Arch Glacier Normal Mode and Normal Mode Carapac, and other bosses in that tier. Now here's a setup that's good enough for even some very high level content at a decent price. This is a great gear setup here. The Superior Stadius' armor is decently cheap, is almost as good as Masterwork, and you can put perks on it. The Jaws are best in slot pretty much everywhere. The Laceration Boots are decent, and the passive is great for when you're using two-handed weapons. The Fury Blades only have tier 80 damage, but their accuracy is tier 90, so while these may do less damage than the Ripper Claws at most places, they're plenty good enough at any boss that you'd want to do with melee. Eventually, you'll want better jewelry, like a Reaver's Ring and Amulet of Souls, but the Ceridoman's Whisper and an Imbued Warrior's Ring are really good for their price. Lastly, the Jazz Book is amazing, up to around a 9% average DPS increase in single target combat, and it's going to be one of your best pocket slide items up until the very end. The only items potentially better than this are the Grimoire, though that costs about 10 million GP per hour just to use, the Full Book, which is over 400 million GP and increases your damage taken too, and the Wind Book is sometimes better in multi-combat. Here's the last setup. Exactly the same as before, but with the Dark Ice Swords. The Dark Ice Swords are amazing, generally better than even the tier 90 Drygor weapons due to their tier 88 damage and passive effects. This setup will cost you 83 mil, so still somewhat cheap. From this point you'd focus on getting Cinder Banes, Greater Barge, and then those jewelry upgrades. Another very important thing to consider are weapon and armor perks through invention. These can be very expensive or hard to get depending on your invention level, so I won't go into too much detail. Let's just take a look at a couple of cheaper weapon perks, Precise and Equilibrium, for example. Precise 6 is, on average, a 7.5% DPS increase on its own, and only costs about 70k GP to create on average. The other, Equilibrium 4, is a 5.3% DPS increase on average, and only costs about 240k GP to make on average. Perks can be complicated, so I'll link down to the RS Wiki's list of entry-level perks, so you can figure out which ones best fit your level and budget. I hope you all find this helpful on your PVM journey. I've been a little slower than usual to put out videos over the last few weeks, but I have a lot planned. Thanks for watching, and see you later.